Um, so to start off, I want to just thank everybody for coming out here and um, and I guess wanting to be involved in this. Uh, it kind of started with Shane and Angie and I just having a conversation. Um, where we are right now, this is the former Fresh Mama's restaurant. And you guys might be familiar with Vegas Hot Yoga, which is just next door. So this place used to be Fresh Mama's. It's now going to become Chef's Fitness Kitchen. It was the Chef Cass Fitness Kitchen, but then Chef Michael joined and they're partners now. So um, it's pretty cool. They've got a smoothie bar. And they have tonight, very special just for us, they've set up this catering line. And so there's two cool things about it. One is that they, they've set it up for us. They have $2 off their smoothies. And the catering line is $10. And um, why don't you come over here and uh, tell them a little bit. Well, introduce yourself. And then... Hi, I'm Chef Nick. I'm actually their sous chef. I take care of all the catering. And I haven't held a mic in a while, so excuse me. It's for the video. Oh, OK. Yeah. Sweet. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, I'm excited to uh, be able to speak in front of you and do some cool food for you. Um, it's one of the highlights of my job. Um, and also meet all of you. I already got to know these two a little bit. Um, but we're starting with a salad. It's kind of like strawberry fields. So strawberry fields forever, you know the song. Um, so it has a little bit of feta, strawberries, uh, some blueberries, uh, microgreens. Uh, yes, sir. A little red pepper now, because it needed some color and some niceness. Um, also some nuts. So if there's any nut allergies, I apologize. You can accommodate that if, if you absolutely need it. Um, and then the first entree is a um, little couscous with like a little summer vegetable, um, sauteed spinach, and also some uh, grilled chicken thighs. Um, and then the other one, I did like a little surf and turf. Um, so it is a uh, black, uh, black <laughs> brown rice and um, grilled tilapia and also some braised short rib on there with a little local grown Believe it or not, local grown microgreens. Um, and that's it. If you guys have any questions or you need anything extra, just tell them to ask for me and I'll be out and help you out. Cool. Thanks. Chef Nick. Yeah. And um, there's also Becky behind the counter there. She's the one who is ta taking orders. Um, the way that the catering works, again, is you, you would walk up there, uh, pay with Becky if you guys wanted to um, take advantage of the catered food. And there's a uh, place over there, napkins, uh, silverware. And um, so what we could do now as opposed to, because we're planning on having everyone do intros and, and you know talk a lot. So the food might be a little bit noisy. So we figured for anybody that is interested in taking advantage of the catering, um, why don't you raise your hand just so we can see who is interested in eating. That would include me too. Uh, cool, yeah. So uh, should we start then? That or do you guys? Why don't you let's guys? Do, so yeah. let's just kind of. We're just gonna go through real quick, kind of like what we're seeing for tonight. We're gonna go through and do introductions, kind of explain how this got together. Uh, then we're gonna do some logistics. Uh, actually, so yeah. We're gonna do logistics and stuff, and then we'll break for a second, we'll grab some food, and then we'll come back and we'll do introductions for everybody. After everybody kind of introduces who they are and what they need and what they want, then it's like a 30-second intro. Um, then we're gonna start getting down to the meat and potatoes of why we're here. So we're gonna talk about the current system, what's going on, who's the key players in that system, um, what they need, and then we can start an open dialogue as to what we can do for everybody. Um, so let's just go through uh, real quick with this. And we'll break real quick. So basically, the logistics are um, we're going to have one break in the middle, probably around 7:20. So just keep that in mind so you don't get antsy. The restrooms are back there, um, around the corner behind the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah, so if anybody needs to use that, use that. Um, again, if you wanted to get food, you'll go up there and pay for it, and then you can just grab your food. Um, today, we're starting a little bit late because traffic was a little crazy, um, but in the future, uh, we'd probably like to start on time just so that we respect everybody's time. So we'll probably have meetings uh, around this time, 6 to 8. We're, we're, we're still trying to work out when we're going to do the next one, probably in about two weeks, just so that we can all take stock in what we just did, marinate on it, come back together, and bring whoever else that we think should be involved in this conversation. Um, 
if you can't hear somebody talking, this is like a hippie thing. Sorry, that's kind of my thing. Uh, you know, if you can't hear somebody talking, kind of put your hand in the air and wiggle your fingers, and then that way we all know that we need to speak up a little bit more. Um, also, when you're talking, just kind of keep in mind, like, why am I talking? There's a lot of people here, so let's just kind of, like, go through quickly and try and, like, discuss what we need to discuss. And then if you know that you can help this guy, you know, make sure that you get up with him afterwards and we'll have the discussions that way. Um, we're also passing around this sign-up list. I don't know if it got stopped anywhere. Does somebody have it? Okay, so if you guys want to put that on there, if, if you don't want that information publicized, please let us know, and we won't put that on the Facebook page. But basically what we're trying to do from here so we're going to start a Facebook page just for this group, and we're going to try and keep it really clean. So try not to post, like, newspaper articles on there or, like, ads for anything. We're going to try and keep it just logistics of, hey, I'm with this organization, or I'm with this elementary school, and we need shovels, or we need this, and try and keep it really clean to where it's a functional group. So uh, we'll post all that contact information in there as long as everybody's okay with it. If you're not, come back to us afterwards and tell us, and then that way we'll keep your name off the list. But we're going to try and start, like, a kind of green phone book for the Valley so that we can all pull each other's resources and try and get some stuff accomplished. Um, I think that's it. Do you want to go into why you want to? So I, uh, I was on Facebook, and I noticed um, this really pretty profile picture of this lovely girl right here. She clicked on one of the pictures, and I clicked through it, and I started going through her profile pictures. And um, she really sparked my interest. And I said to her immediately, I said, I don't know who you are, but we have got to meet. And so that next day, she was at my juice bar, downtown grassroots, Carson and 6th Street. I <laughs> go down there. Um, and Owen was there. And Owen is somebody that I have been um, talking to and wanting to create some sort of program or initiative to do something. And so my background is in health and wellness, and I love working with children. I love going to the schools. I do this thing called Kids Kitchen where the kids get up and so and I've been working with Melissa and Green Our Planet and both of them are here. I'm so happy about that. But um, as the conversation progressed, we realized that all three of us had the same idea in mind. And that idea was we know a lot of people in this community that are doing great things and all of us were not interacting w with each other enough. So what happens, what could happen if we all got together, put our minds together, and went for one big thing, which is the thing that is the core value of what we're trying to do anyway. And so that's what this conversation is about. So uh, I know a lot of you here, but um, definitely want to get to know the ones that I don't know. And if anyone doesn't know anybody, we definitely want to meet you as well. But um, thank you guys for coming, and we'll get something to eat, and then we'll begin. Think about kind of what you want to say. So we're basically just going to say, this is who I am, this is the organization I'm with, this is what our organization needs, and this is what we'd be able to help you out with. So kind of marinate on that for a couple minutes while everybody kind of gets food, and then we'll come back in like probably five, ten minutes. Is that good? Cool. Um, I'm going to start off and just give you an example as to like what we're looking for. Um, just try and keep it under 30 seconds. So I'll start off. Uh, I'm, should I wait? Okay. So I'm Angie Morelli. Uh, I am involved in a lot of different community projects. What I'm kind of known for the most is uh, GMO Free Vegas. I don't know if you guys are familiar. Uh, we organize, there's a lot of us members here tonight. Uh, we organize the March Against Monsanto every year. So um, that's kind of one of the things I'm into, but I'm also into a lot of other stuff too. So I'm here tonight because with GMO Free Vegas, we kind of saw the fact that, you know, uh, we want for everybody to eat healthier, but the problems are that people really kind of don't know how to prepare food for themselves anymore, and they don't really have any accessibility, um, and they're learning bad habits in school. So we're looking at a long-term solution, and that's where we started talking about doing the, the gardens in the elementary schools. So basically, uh, that's my intro. Uh, the, I'm here more of a resource. I don't really want anything. I just want to get uh, you guys all of the tools that you need to do the projects that you're working on, and that's kind of my thing. So we'll just kind of go around the room. Do you want, do you want to go next? Sure. Okay. Sure. Um, my name is Owen Carver. You guys are, probably all know me, or maybe we met the first time tonight. Um, I'm just really passionate about things in the world, and I think that communication and education are the best way to do that. And I really am a strong believer in sustainability. Um, I got really passionate about education partly through um, 
working with Green Our Planet. I've sponsored one of their gardens. And just connecting with the students at the schools in the garden and seeing what that does really opened my mind up to how everything is interconnected in sustainability. And I thought that schools are just the perfect place to do that kind of work. And uh, so I also you know, have met a bunch of different people in the community and noticed that so many people are doing amazing projects and I just wanted to try to help make us connect and to try to think of how we can take maybe everything that we do and all our resources and assets and perhaps create a new second generation of projects that would be more kind of collective projects or, or things that we could all work on together that would also benefit everyone else in Las Vegas, especially in the green sustainable community. So um, that's kind of why I helped to get this meeting going and I'm hoping to see that we can out of this create either, either in an idea today or going down the line through commu continuing this communication, creating larger projects with a bigger collective impact that get more people who would normally never pay attention to sustainability or agriculture or school gardens to, to say this is the future, this is big, this is important, this is, uh, this is what we all need to focus on. So, so that's kind of my, my take. Uh, and then Shane, you already mentioned this, but yeah. why don't you do a quick answer? I kind of already did mine, but... Um, <laughs> When, so my my whole thing is uh, I've been working with Creative Change with Melissa for uh, like almost what two years now, and uh, going into the schools, going into a lot of other schools, and hearing the same thing over and over again. Um, here we have the money for the school, but we don't have enough money to keep up these gardens. We don't have a curriculum. We don't have enough participation. We don't have enough cooperation from the school district. And um, I'm in a world where there's things happening all the time with health and wellness, whether it's doing some of the, the downtown farmers markets, the schools, events that I hold at my own establishment. And, um, but it's always the same small group of people that are participating. And it's, I have never been quite in a situation where we've all come together. And I do something with everybody. Like I work with Enrique and his wife and we go and we did this, uh, the whole thing where we gathered food from Whole Foods and Fresh 52 and we did green smoothies and raw vegetable soups for the homeless. What a great idea. Nobody ever really thinks about the homeless and how are they eating. But his whole thing is now he went to school for agriculture, for permaculture, and he's now distributing seeds at the schools. And he's a guy that's been taking his time and his energy into taking care of the people that can't take care of themselves, the homeless. And now he's getting in to uh, the schools. And, and I really like that because that's what we should all be doing. We should all be participating in on everything because it all is a part of a collective. Today is, um, and the reason why we're all here is for each one and every single one of you to introduce yourself, what you do, what your passion is, what you want to see different, what, what kind of change you want to see. And then we have to see how we all kind of fit in together because it is it's not a crazy puzzle that we have to figure out it's all part of the same idea and so the same idea is does this turn into a downtown farmers market which is something that I'm really passionate about and do we create something very eventful every single week where we close out the streets just like Santa Monica and you can go and you see all these kiosks and tents and there's fruits and vegetables everywhere but I want to create a learning component around this farmer's market to where families would create a bridge to downtown where children and, fa and families could benefit from, uh, from just walking and learning, meeting the farmers and learning about everything there is to learn about, about ag agriculture and sustainability and everything else. So um, I'm, let's begin, right? We're going to go around. Yeah. Uh, real quick, though, before, before, oh, before we're quick, if, once we start speaking, if you go that way, because it's going to leave, and I want everyone to meet. Nick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's kind of the context of, of uh, Shane and Angie and I putting this together and also kind of our personal intros. And for the sake of time, what we're thinking to do is everyone to start, introduce themselves, take, we'll try to keep it under like 30 seconds or under for each person. And then as we go through having dialogue, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to make room for uh, Kim from Green Our Planet and Melissa from 
Creative Change Now to speak about school gardens and their projects, what their challenges are with that specifically, partly because school gardens are kind of the core of the vision that Shane and I and Angie have. But we want to also open up where anyone who has, let's say, a big project or proposal that they're working on, we definitely want to make space for you to individually stand up and speak about that. And we're also going to leave room for sure for everyone to kind of stand up also to be part of a dialogue to add to this sort of collective knowledge of what's going on. Now, tonight we can't accomplish everything. We can't have all the dialogue that we want. So sometimes you'll hear someone say something and you want to kind of comment specifically on top of what they said. If it's something that we can create outside of this as a dialogue, like we're planning to create a Facebook group, just keep in mind too, in the sake of time, that there's going to be space for, you know, for more connections and we're going to have more of these gatherings too that are going to be even bigger. And actually, this meeting originally, we only thought maybe it would be 10 or 15 people, so it's incredible how many people are passionate in the community that want to come together. There's obviously a need for this and a lot to say. So um, with that, we can go ahead and start doing the... I'm going to be the jerk, so I, if you're going way too over, I'm going to kind of hold up my hand, and that's just because I'm trying to respect everybody here, so, okay? Yeah. And, and everybody's, uh, the microphone, like, you need to speak loud enough for everyone to hear, but also to keep in mind that the microphone, if you're speaking loudly, don't have it too close to your face, because then it'll be super loud. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. I'm James Wong. I uh, run the Reset Project and the Sunday Reset Project. Uh, currently, right now, what I'm working on is a community kitchen um, out of the ice house. And I'm also working with Melissa and Create a Change Now to figure out a way that we can take the waste from the school gardens and turn that back around and get it into our community. I'm not going to stand up. Hi, I'm Chris Pepper Wong, his wife. <laughs> And um, I'm, I'm here really to support everybody. And I do have a bag full of um, knitted um, scarves that I've made that I want to donate to the homeless. And uh, if anybody here knows Meredith Spriggs or sees her, see yeah? Her. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah. Then I'm going to give them to yeah. you and I can, good. Thank you, Shane. Hi everybody, I'm Amy Fincham. Um, I work full time as a designer for Design Cell Architects, um, but I also have an organization called Collab Las Vegas, and I originally started it wanting to get architects some attention in this town and designers to showcase that we should get the work to stay here when there's a huge recession and 50% of architects are laid off. Um, and almost three years later, uh, we now um, provide commissions for local artists uh, big public art projects uh, through the city of Las Vegas. And so to date we've been able to give uh, 15 artists um, commissions that would otherwise may not have stayed in Las Vegas. Um, my passion is also community garden work. I met Rosalind Brooks uh, before she started Vegas Roots Community Garden and um, stayed involved with it for a good three, four years. Um, I just moved off of the property. I was living there for a couple years. Um, so I want to change the city's mind about um, why these places work in urban environments. Um, and we've been able to get a new zoning ordinance for community gardens um, with my involvement in that project. My name is Nick Brannigan. Um, I was one of the first non-GMO activists out here in Vegas about three to four years ago. I have a uh, radio show on naturalnews.com called Health Conspiracy Radio. Um, I work locally with a lot of groups like GMO Free Vegas, Natural Organic uh, Healing Center, Vegas Valley Organics, um, Las Vegas Homeopathy. Um, I've known Shane about two years now and met Angie a couple uh, years or a couple months later. So i um, glad they finally hooked up because I love them both and I'm glad they're doing this. And I'm, uh, personally, I'm trying to learn to grow more food myself, um, starting with microgreens, which I'm taking a class on Tuesday. And uh, that's it. I'm excited to see what happens here. Hi, uh, I'm Barry Sklar. Uh, company is Happy Foods LLC. We're starting on our first aquaponic greenhouse and hopefully we'll become educated in aquaponics and spread the theory throughout the, the Las Vegas Valley. Oh, I'll take it. You got it. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Neil Sickles. I'm a filmmaker. I'm really happy that uh, this is going on. 
um, and to see everybody here. And this means uh, uh, I think we're off to a good start. You know, um, my thing is, uh, oh, I know many of you from Great Basin Permaculture. Uh, I'm also an organizer for GMO Free Vegas. Um, and uh, big, the big thing that I'm passionate about uh, right now is that I'm working on a film uh, that talks about change. It uh, is, uh, is basically developing a new worldview, uh, one that uh, you know, we all believe in, I think, and we can all understand, and we all just kind of don't really know how to explain it to other people, too, and I'm exploring that. Uh, in this film, and I think uh, I'd like to, you know, document uh, what's going on, what's going on in town, and uh, and and go from there. So thank you, Angie. Do you have a? Oh no, I was saying oh. oh, sorry. Hello, my name is uh, Sarah Phillips. I'm actually a student at UNLV in nutrition and exercise physiology. I actually am here today to just kind of open up my connections and volunteer my services, really. I want to be uh, a part of a greater thing right now happening in Las Vegas. Hi, everyone. My name is Julie Sanders, and I am the chef coordinator for Create a Change Now. And um, I get to go in the schools and I work with the chefs and the educators to teach the kids on how to make um, healthy, delicious food with what they've grown in the garden. Um, so really my passion is community health, is creating a healthier Las Vegas and working with various communities. I get to work with the kids and I also am passionate about working with employees and organizations and transforming the health of workplaces. Hi everybody, I'm Melissa Blinn. I am the executive director and co-founder of Create a Change Now. Um, about my passion, I got very passionate about this when about eight years ago I was a nutritionist that took on children that had type 2 diabetes, Crohn's disease, and colitis. Their parents would drop them off to me at the gym where I used to work many, many years ago and they would say, fix my child, and they would leave. And it was very disheartening that I was working with children that were eight years old and they were already diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And this started to become a very frequent problem. So I knew my purpose was bigger and I jumped into philanthropy and I've been in it for six years and I'm kicking ass and taking names in the community and I look forward to really keep doing it. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm uh, Kim McQuarrie from uh, Green Art Planet. Oh, louder! I'm oh wow! I'm I'm Kim from Green Our Planet, and uh, we have a green crowdfunding platform. We're projects. That's how we kind of started, and we've been in Vegas for. Uh, well, actually, I grew up in Vegas, so I actually am a native of Las Vegas. We've been back here for about four years, and we have a we started a school garden program a year and a half ago. Because we had a green crowdfunder, we thought it would be a great idea to raise money for schools so they could get over the hurdle of having money to have school gardens. And so we started about a year and a half ago. We've put in about 62 gardens so far in the Clark County School District, mostly elementary schools, about 50 elementary schools, about eight middle schools, and about um, seven or eight high schools. And um, that is basically what we do. David Butler, Vegas Intensive Agriculture, and uh, my personal interest and passion is uh, phytointegration, which is uh, combining agriculture and architecture, and uh, so that is something that uh, drives me personally, uh, including uh, home hydroponics uh, that uh, I do to start uh, testing some of the various uh, ideas that uh, I'd like to see developed. Uh, Vegas Intensive Agriculture is all about uh, developing uh, sustainability all through the systems that are here in uh, Las Vegas. So one of the things that uh, we would like to start doing is uh, developing a harmonization of the laws and codes relating to farmers markets throughout uh, the Vegas area. Uh, we think that that's a very important thing to help uh, grow the uh, the culture of farmers markets here and uh, we also are working on developing a grant writers cooperative so that people can come together 
and uh, work on getting the grant funding that they need. So that's us in a nutshell, and uh, this is a great uh, start uh, here tonight, and looking forward to what comes of this. Hi, everybody. My name is Shannon Beckham, and I'm a small business owner here. And uh, about a year ago, I started working with Discovery Charter School, and we put a garden in. And a lot of it was uh, fun to work with the kids, but I wanted to learn how to grow in Vegas. So I'm going to learn with the kids. So it's kind of fun. So I'm here to network, to be with like-minded people. And I, I, I love that um, a community of us coming together and doing something big. I think it's wonderful, and I'm happy to be here. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Jessica Penrod. I'm with Great Basin in Permaculture, and we have been around for about five years now. We started as a book club just to learn about permaculture design, and since then I've started some projects. Uh, the permaculture Learning Garden is now four years old. We have an annual pancake breakfast from two weeks ago. Um, that's fun. Uh, we grow out all kinds of different seeds, just trying things that are bioregionally adapted, um, different farming techniques. Uh, we're really thinking about water, our most important resource. We also have monthly meetings, and we built a garden for an art studio downtown, Blackbird Studios. And we're also working with Green Valley Library um, talking about seeds and how we can get some seeds in the library. <coughs> okay, I'm Cheryl Wagner. I'm with the Clark County School District. My role is in the Partnership Program Office, and I'm the staff coordinator for Partnerships with so my main purpose is here is to kind of help with that, that middle piece. We know there's issues working with the school district, the bureaucracy that we have involved, but, but the community that works with them also has to understand that we have mandated state, national curriculum, those kinds of things that, that have to occur during the day. And although a lot of us would like it all to be centered on health, um, it, there, there's a lot of other stuff too. So that's I'm a, I'm a really good middle person resource for any questions, issues with the schools. I work with all the groups that are doing gardens in our school gardens. Um, we're working on developing a set of standards right now um, that, that trying to get our school district um, facilities folks on board with what's going on. That's a big piece of it, but also to get the community that's helping to understand that there are constraints as well. So, so anyway, that's my role. That's what I'm here for is to address any questions. I'm definitely an advocate for what you guys are all doing, and um, we'll do whatever I can to help as long as it's appropriate academically for the kids. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Eric King, and uh, about 20 years uh, resident here in Las Vegas. Uh, lifelong entrepreneur and innovator, uh, private financier in commercial real estate, and a permaculturist for about five, six years. Uh, just recently became an elected official here for Southern Nevada, uh, Clark County, and um, we have a conservation district here in Southern Nevada. Um, we hopefully will be a resource for all of you, amazing people doing amazing things, to interface and integrate decision makers that you know, are elected officials, policy makers, with all these amazing grassroots efforts and individual entrepreneurial endeavors that uh, really excite me. Um, so hopefully uh, cdsn.org, jump on there, find me before you go, and we would love to help facilitate all this integration, something I'm very passionate about, food resiliency here in the driest city in all of North America. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Hi, <clears throat> my name is Mike Litt. I uh, work for the Clean Energy Project, and uh, we published the state's first sustainably focused consumer guide. And so if you have or know a good business, we'd love to list you on that for free. Um, and uh, feel free to grab me afterwards or uh, message me on Facebook. Hi, I'm Maria Minich. Um, I'm a field biologist. Uh, I'm originally from Toronto, from Canada. I'm not a US citizen. I moved here for work in 2008. And in Toronto, you know, everybody's very, everyone rides around on bikes and public transport's normal and, you know, everyone recycles and compost gets collected twice a week. And I come here and it's just like, I see people throwing glass in the trash. I'm like, and then go to 
Lake Mead and see the water levels just plummet. I'm like, my God, we can do so much better than that. And so, um, yeah, I just want to be part of a community that does better. I'm Jennifer Edwards. I uh, am a field biologist as well. Um, I also was a Peace Corps volunteer in Zambia where I taught sustainable agriculture and environmental education and awareness. And um, I have a master's degree in environmental leadership, so I would very much like to put my skills to use and become more involved in the community here. I'm also working on the film about change with Neil. I have some expertise in um, transforming systems and paradigm shifting as well as cultural change. So I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. I'm Anna. We do food, not bombs here in Las Vegas. We collect veggies from a farmer's market and service it through the community. Low income families, the homeless. It's amazing. We want to get into schools and change the school lunches. That's what I want to do. And I want to teach everyone how to eat vegan. <laughs> Hi, my name is Enrique. Um, I'm one of the farmers with Garden Farms. We uh, build and uh, upkeep the farms and the schools. Um, as my wife said, we also do Food Not Bombs, where we uh, pick up veggies from the uh, farmer's market, about two, 300 pounds a week. And so that could play a role in this. So there's plenty more available, has been my experience. Um, we're also part of Great Basin Permaculture. Uh, you heard from Jessica. Uh, the Master Gardener Program. And um, I also write sometimes for Natural Awakening. So if this ever gets a name, uh, you know, I could put a, an article out and, and talk about what we're doing. Hi, my name's Kim Borghese. I'm the garden coordinator at Givens Elementary School. My main passion in life is just generally the environment, nature, sustainability. Um, right now, my mission is to inspire young children to love nature, and I feel like gardening is that springboard into greater ecology and the environment. And I think if they learn and know about things, they'll learn to love it, and what they love, they're going to protect. So I want to spread that to the kids at first because they're so amazing. But I'd also like to spread that through just local communities, have backyard gardens and local community co-ops where we can all share what we have in excess. Um, and that's just the beginning. I'm completely honored to be here with you all. Again, this thing with like-minded people is awesome. And I don't really need anything, but if anybody needs a really great cheerleader for their, um, their missions, then I'm here. Hi, my name is Mark Borghese. I'm an attorney. I practice trademark and copyright law. I'm here because I love food and also because I'm tired of my friends, uh, my kids' friends coming over or nieces and nephews coming over and the only thing they can eat is mac and cheese and hot dogs. And so I'd like to get the kids eating a little bit healthier. Uh, hi, my name is Christine King. Um, I'm coming from Crestwood Elementary School. Uh, last spring we started our garden and not even a year later it has spearheaded all kinds of community involvement and excitement and we're just looking to take it to a whole new level. Um, I am working with some wonderful people at my school that weren't able to be here tonight so I said I definitely would come. I definitely want to be part, more of a part of it. And as I said, it's exciting and the energy and the kids, it's all wonderful and just want to grow it even further. Hi, I'm Beth Gillette and um, former Girl Scout. And I remember the PSAs with the tear and the Indian. And I think that's my passion is messaging. Um, I've seen a lot of great efforts and I applaud all of you and your ideas. But I think I want to be part of the one big thing that we can all um, someone mentioned it to start, that we can all unify and say we all want to be part of this one big thing so that we aren't a fringe community anymore and Las Vegas is not such a freak. <laughs> I'm really, fr I've been here for, since 1977. I'm really frustrated with Nevada and how behind the scenes we are, so I applaud your optimism, but I feel a little more like she does. Enough already, let's get on to the one big thing. I'm Darlene Mia, and I've been here since 1979, and 
I am not involved in all of this. I'm more in the media end of it. So I came tonight so that I could see what was going on. I'm launching Zen City Vegas, which is really about the city beyond the neon and the life-friendly things that all of us do here. So I'm here to help in any way that I can to promote as much as possible. Hi, I'm Karen Haggerty, and I'm at Wright Elementary School, and we have a garden that I've started myself, but now that I know there's so many other people to help, we need help because we got grasshoppers eating our cabbage, and we grew some other food, and we have like these little flies. So having a garden, we learned together, is a lot of work because you have to learn how to keep your plants from being eaten by pests. And we want it to be an organic garden, so we just kind of have shared with the bugs our garden. So, uh, <laughs> um, but it's a fabulous experience for the kids. I work with Gate students, and it it is so inspiring how they get so excited about planting. Um, it's it's just incredible. So I want to learn a lot. I think there's a lot to learn also about recycling. Thank you. I'm Pauline Babette, and I work in the government purchase of environmentally sensitive lands and very passionate about saving the planet. And it's really lonely out there, so <laughs> that's why I'm here. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Steve Ripka. I've got a loud voice, so hopefully you can all hear me okay. Um, I'm passionate, like, like everybody in this room, about want to do the right thing. I'm part of the U.S. Green Building Council, the American Solar Energy Society uh, chapter here in Southern Nevada to promote green building and renewable energy. And now I recognize that we really need to work on resiliency. Eric mentioned that word. It's so important for the future of this entire city that we create resiliency and local communities that are real. So starting with the kids is great, but we have to take this to every aspect of the community so that we're not dependent on things that may be at risk as we move into the future with all the unknowns that we have with climate change. So that's why I'm here. And I write a Green Living column in the RJ, and I can hopefully promote some of these ideas. And this is my wife, Marcella. It's her birthday today. And that's how committed we are to being here. Um, I'm, I get to live with this man. My name is Marsala Ripka. I'm a celebrity journalist with Luxury Las Vegas Magazine. Um, I, I'm very excited when um, people like James Cameron, who has a national platform, uh, becomes a, a, a vegan and adopts being a vegan, and his wife has started a school in California. And, and so those are examples that, that shine a national spotlight on what we're all doing so that we no longer become the fringe, we no longer become the, you know, the alternative or the weirdos, but now we are becoming more of the mainstream. And um, in my column in, in Luxury Las Vegas, I write a five-page piece every month, and so I'm always looking for um, really important organizations to shine a light on. Um, so you never know, you know, people can come to me and, and whatever. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hi everybody, how's everyone doing tonight? This is like a microphone that goes into something, not a microphone that, okay, yes, I, yeah, just, just making sure. Um, so thank you everybody for being here tonight. I'm Chef Kaz, this is basically my place, um, our place. Uh, this is um, now pretty much officially, though still unofficially, the Chef's Fitness Kitchen. Um, it's, we've been in here since, um, in the front, since August 12th, um, it was pretty much unexpected. Uh, I rented out the kitchen from the previous owner, who's the Vegas Hot um, Yoga owner. And um, we had just been doing a catering and private chef operation at that point. And I took over the kitchen just for that. Um, and 
not even a month and a half later, they were like, we're moving out of the front. You got to figure it out with the owner. So a restaurant kind of fell into our laps. Um, and I'd been completely, I had been in business for about four years at that point, but, um, the staff that started with me when we moved into this space was not even with me anymore. I, yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thanks for being here. So, Melissa. And yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, or, so let me say really quickly to. Oh, we did. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, uh, we'll yeah. Go ahead and do your intro, real quick. <laughs> Sorry. Hello, my name is Anthony, and I'm an organizer. <laughs> my name is Anthony, and I'm an organizer at GMO Free Vegas. Um, and I'm here to see what it's all about. It sounds great from what I've seen on Facebook. I'm really anxious to let's do some things. Yeah. Thank you. So. Um, so next up, just uh, because I know um, Melissa is going to be leaving pretty soon, uh, and we'd also uh, plan to have, uh, because school gardens are kind of a centerpiece of, of, of sort of the core of the community, we wanted to make sure that um, uh, Kim from Green Air Planet and Melissa from Creative Change Now had a chance to speak for a few minutes about what their programs are, what's working, um, what are their challenges, and what are their needs and how maybe the community can kind of lean in and help solve some of those needs or perhaps expand what they're doing uh, here to be out you know, to the rest of the community. So maybe whatever those models are, we can expand out into whether it's community co-ops or you pick or whatever. Uh, so why don't we take this time then to have, um, why don't we have Melissa come start and uh, tell us about Creative Change Now and, and uh, what you guys are doing. What, what time do you think we should do? Maybe five? Yeah, so Creative Change Now, like I said, is a local nonprofit tackling childhood obesity. And how we do that is we adopt at-risk elementary schools and we instill our healthy school, healthy life programming. One thing I want to be really crystal, crystal clear on with all of you here tonight is that we are not a garden organization. We are an organization that is instilling healthy habits and healthy behaviors, not only at the children's level, but with the families. And how we do that is, yes, we build edible desert gardens. That's the hub of our programming, but it doesn't stop there. We have three parts of our programming. One is our Chefs in Schools program. Mr. Chef, Chef and Chef Kaz are two of our featured chefs that come into our schools and educate and inspire these children now that they have this garden, what do they do with it? How can they get home and make it fun, easy, and duplicatable? At our schools, over 95% of the children get breakfast and lunch at school. I did hear that you say you want to make an impact on food lunches and what's being served at the school. I support you 100%, but sweetheart, you got a big mountain to climb and kick ass, take names doing it. Seriously. It is, a, it is definitely a, a interesting. It's, it's interesting. Um, so again, it's with chefs like Shane and Kaz um, that truly make a difference in the community. And it takes a special chef to work with students. Let me say that loud and clearly. It takes a special individual to connect with the child. And these two gentlemen, when they come into our schools, they remember them by name. They remember them. So whatever they're doing and how they're inspiring them, they are remember, remembering them by name, and they're going to run up to them and they'll say, oh my gosh, I, I went and bought kale, or I tried this and I made this at home. So when we have that consistency going on in our schools, we know we are making a change consistently. So that's one part of our program. Another part of our program is our after-school garden club, and that's where we do garden and nutrition education as well as, well as bringing community partners that are in line with our mission. One of our partners is Cleveland Clinic. They come in and teach about new brain health and nutrition. So we have a lot of amazing community partners that are coming in after school. <coughs> the Cooperative Extension is one of our community partners. They come in and they teach gardening at home. How do, how do they garden small places? Most of these children live in a car or they live in an apartment. So we're building, yes, very large gardens at their schools, but 
So how could they garden in small places? So our garden club is our hub of our programming where we actually get to touch the lives of the families and make changes of the lives. I can tell you my garden club yesterday had 75 parents and 75 kids. And that was the last two months back to back. We are making a change because we are affecting the families. And our last part of our programming is our Let's Move program. Our Let's Move program is we actually are partnered with two other local nonprofits, Desert Rain and Jump for Joy. We bring in fitness camps during Christmas break and spring break and have the kids become active about three days a week. And we also do nutrition education and feed these children. Most of these children during Christmas break do not usually eat. And their parents are working two to three jobs, so they sit at home and they're not active. So we offer this completely free as long as the parents sign up during Christmas break and spring break so they can come and be active four to five hours of the day and they can also get a meal. We've recently partnered with Three Square and Three Square will be feeding our children during all of our fitness camps. So again, we're having probably well over 2,000 kids during Christmas break. They're gonna be doing activities in our schools, fitness related, and they're gonna be going home with food. So again, let me be crystal clear. Create a Change Now is not a garden organization. We are an organization that is instilling healthy habits and behaviors with the children. One thing that we are very passionate about is quality and not quantity. Yes, there are a lot of schools that want a garden. One thing that I've had the opportunity and the honor to is, number one, I've had two days ago, I had the honor to shadow a principal for half of the day. And I was blown away with what it is like to be a principal in an at-risk elementary school in the day-to-day -day, um, struggles that they deal with. Gardening is one of their least, least concerns. And I can understand why. When there's children that are being left at school, and now, when it's 6 o'clock at night and their parents aren't coming to pick them up, they're getting turned over to Child Haven. So these principals, you guys, have a big, big, big burden on their hand. So with that being said, one of our biggest concerns and one of the things that we are focusing on is we adopt our schools for longevity. We take a school no less than three years. And again, we are very, very, very consistent about quality and not quantity. So when we take on a school, it's for long term. Real quick, uh, so we're nope, at you're five good. minutes. Could you tell us then quickly um, what are some of the challenges that you have and then what are some uh, needs that you have that perhaps the community could help with? Um, one challenge I have is, I would have to say, is consistency with, um, I would say consistency, um, because there are a lot of school gardens that are popping up, consistency, I would say, in having um, support in the garden with the kids, um, that tends to drop a little bit. Um, you know, the teachers, they're not, garden they're not gardeners, they're not farmers. Um, you know, so consistency with making sure that the children are getting educated in the garden, that needs to be more consistent. Um, I would also have to say another issue is um, funding. You know, yes, there's a lot of school gardens that are being popped up and they're being built and they're putting schools, but what's going to happen? One thing that I've been honored to work with Cheryl back there with CCSD is that we are not taking these schools on for a year and putting in a garden. I know you guys are sponsoring a garden, paying for a garden and the maintenance. That's great and all, but, you know, again, what's going to happen at year two, year three, year four? We need to think sustainability, you guys. In four years from now, What's going to happen to these gardens? What's going to happen to all these programming? So our mission is really, truly working with community partners and adopting schools for longevity and making sure these programs are sustained. So sustainability is a big issue. And great, we can put them all over the place, but what's going to happen in three years? That needs to be discussed. So you'd say your needs are funding and then support in the gardens for that consistency. Absolutely. Okay. All of the programming in general. But... We're doing good. Great. Not an issue. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Kim, would you like to come speak for Green Air Planet? All right. Make sure you speak up loud too, so everybody okay. can hear you. If you guys in the back, if anybody can't hear Kim speak easily, just raise your hand like this, and then, uh, so that will know. Okay, well, we came in as a different, a little different way. We kind of backed into school gardens. I say we actually louder. Louder. Wow. Well, I'm not. Yeah. We came, 
We actually got into school gardens a little bit differently. Our interest was, my own background is, I grew up in Las Vegas. I uh, got a degree in, I went to UNLV for two years and transferred out. I got a degree in biology. I got a master's degree in anthropology, so I was always interested in, in natural history and, and environment, that kind of thing, ever since I was a kid. And I spent a lot of years down in South America. You know, I spent a lot of time down in the rainforest down in South America. I, made, I became a, uh, a filmmaker, a documentary filmmaker. So my partner and I make documentary films all around the world, mainly about natural history, grizzly bears, Amazon rainforest, or different television channels. So we actually came back to Vegas, like, I've been gone for a long time, about four years ago and we were working on a project for PBS as filmmakers, and we got this idea of why not, because we're interested in, in, in conservation, that kind of thing. Can you hear me, is that fine? Oh yeah. We thought, why not try, because Kickstarter was kind of becoming big at the time, why not start a, a green crowdfunding platform where anybody in the United States could use it, and it'd be free, it'd be a nonprofit organization, which is what Green Our Planet is, Anybody who wanted to do a green, had a green idea, any organization that wanted to raise funding through crowdfunding could use our platform. So we started that in Vegas about two years ago. And then we thought, well, why not try it out locally? Why not do a beta test in Las Vegas? We thought, why not try schools? Schools be great for schools to have gardens because gardens are great for a whole number of reasons. One reason is, you know, they, it's a great way to learn about ecology, conservation. You should start kids young, not to mention nutrition, science, and that kind of thing. So we went to one school and we say, hey, would you like to try our crowdfunder? That was in Henderson. And they said, yeah, and they started the crowdfunder. And about two months later, they'd finished their project. I think they raised like $7,000 and they put their garden in. And we said, wow, this is great. This is going to work fantastic. We did a few more like that and they raised the money, no problem. Then we ran into our first Title I school. And Title I, as you just heard, is if you have 40% or more of your kids are on free or reduced price lunches. We, went to, we tried it in a Title I school and, and it just kind of hit a wall. It's like they could raise some money, a few thousand dollars, but because of the environment they lived in, the neighborhood, they couldn't raise all the money. So we kind of scratched our heads and said, hey, we're going to have to start, we got to do something different. Why don't we go to corporations and see if we can get corporate sponsors that would sponsor at least half of the school. So we started doing that and that actually worked really well. And, um, you know, Vegas turns out has like 69% of all the schools in Las Vegas are Title I schools. So it's really quite an obstacle for doing that kind of thing. Of course, the school district doesn't have any money, so that, that was not an option. So anyhow, so we have about over 30 corporate sponsors who have stepped up, everybody from the wind to the sands to engineering companies, um, you name it, a lot of hotels. And they go into a, a Title I school, they put up 50% of the funds, and then the school will crowdfund for the rest, sometimes the addition of grants, that kind of thing. And that's kind of what we've done for the last year and a half. So we started at one school a year and a half ago, now we've got like 62 different schools. But because we kind of backed into this, we never really thought more about the, the garden program, but after we did one school, the school said, okay, we have our garden, but now what? Now what do we do? And, I said, and we said, what do you mean, what do, we, what do you do? You, there's your garden, we raise the money, go to it. And so, well, we don't have curricula, we don't have teacher training, we don't have a maintenance program, all this kind of stuff. So we partnered very early on with Garden Farms, where Enrique is from, and that's been a really good partnership. So Garden Farms goes in, puts the, the garden in. They have a lot of experience with school gardens and private gardens. They know how to maintain them. So they, they go in, put the, the raised bed garden in the school, and they maintain them. Permanently, they charge a fee because they're for-profit, we're non-profit but it's not very much for every year. So that kind of solved the maintenance problem for the schools. And then it's like, so what about curricula? We don't have any curricula. How are we supposed to use the garden? And so a year ago, we applied for um, American Honda Foundation grant um, with a Three Square in partnership with Three Square, the food bank. And we got that grant and we hired 12 different CCSD teachers to write curricula for K through five education for STEM and science and gardens. And actually, Jessica Penrod, who was with us at Greener Plant last year, who now is with Great Basin Permaculture, she headed that whole program. And that curricula was finished in uh, September. That's the first time there's been a curricula to Nevada State standards and um, uh, next-gen standards for the state of Nevada. And that was made available in September, mid-September, and a lot of schools are now using that to have gardens. So we kind of solved the funding problem, solved the maintenance problem, solve the curriculum problem, and there's a lot of other hurdles, that kind of thing. I think Melissa mentioned about sustainability. One of our goals there for the schools is to teach schools how to sustain their garden program year after year financially. So we started organizing, um, having the schools organize uh, farmers markets. And we started that a year ago, and John S. Park Elementary is the first school that did a farmers market. 
And since then, about 25 different elementary schools, most of them um, Title I, have done farmers markets. And between farmers markets and harvest parties, they've more than raised the, the necessary money to maintain their garden program. So our goal is to make them financially self-sufficient on their own, that they can continue this program on their own. So they have curricula, they're financially self-sufficient, and, uh, and it's expanding rapidly. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of interest in Clark County. I mean, schools are getting the message and Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I wanted you to finish your sentence. But, yeah. Um, so we're at about five minutes, roughly. Could you okay. also say you know, the needs or challenges you have, and then the needs that perhaps the community can be able to come in and provide or support what you're doing? Right. Well, the challenges are, um, you know, we spend a lot of time going around getting corporate sponsors, and that takes time and energy, and therefore that takes employees, and of course you have to pay your employees. So as a as a small Startup organization financing is always a problem, um, and grants are, are one way. But a lot of the grants you apply for for a nonprofit, they don't pay for organizational overhead. You know, they pay for gardens to be installed, or they pay for equipment, they pay for that kind of thing. But they don't like to pay for overhead. So you have equipment, but who's going to run the equipment? That's always a problem with nonprofits. So we run into that a lot. Um, someone mentioned about getting food into schools. Bracken Elementary School is actually pioneering a salad bar this year. They're very progressive, a great principal, was principal of the year two years ago. So they're taking their garden produce and uh, putting it in a salad bar. They're the first school to do that. So there's a ton of hurdles in doing that, but that is starting. Um, other challenges, so finances are challenging and teacher training, having money to do teacher training. With the grant that we got last year from the American Honda Foundation, we trained 25 different Clark County uh, elementary teachers how to teach in the garden, because there's not that background. They're not used to doing that. And that worked out really well. All those teachers have gone out and are using the curriculum now in their garden. But more teacher training requires money. And so I would say teacher training, more corporate sponsorship, getting food into um, cafeterias, that kind of thing, are three, three things. And those are the challenges, or really quickly then, uh, are there anything immediately that you can think of that, I mean, besides the money and the teacher training that community members can kind of lean in and support you guys with? Well, anybody knows a corporation wants to sponsor a Title I school, <laughs> let me know. We can always use volunteers. I mean, it, it does take a village, I think, for that, that's why you guys, that's why all three of you here, I mean, everybody's here for that reason. It takes a village, you know, that's that uh, collective impact is necessary to turn Las Vegas green, to get a garden movement going, to get, uh, you know, sustainable uh, agriculture going. It's not one organization can't do that, one grant's not going to do that, one piece of curriculum's not going to do that. It takes everybody joining hands. So I think it's really important that people do get together and discuss all this stuff and, and see where they, they might fit in to the whole thing. Whether you're a journalist or an engineer or you know somebody who works in a corporation or you're a CEO. We've had a ton of CEOs, like especially engineering companies, are just they can't wait to get to have their employees get out there in the garden. I mean, they, they, not only do they get involved in the garden, they want to know what else the school is doing. So we try to foster long-term corporate relationships with the schools so that it's not just a one-off. They don't just come in there and do the garden they stay with the school indefinitely. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Melissa from Creative Change Now. She's leaving now. Bye. See you. Thank you for being here. Um, so Angie's going to tell us, too. We've kind of picked out a, a few other uh, people to speak uh, special. So go ahead, Angie. Yeah, so we just want to hear from like a, a few of you guys because we think that you're very pivotal in what I think we're all trying to do here. Um, if we could hear from you a little bit for, Cheryl, for about Martin. Cheryl. Uh, yeah. And we're going to try and keep this to like five minutes at one minute or like when you have one minute left, I'm going to kind of raise your hand to kind of remind you exactly what you want from us. Like if there's specific needs, like you need tractors or you need volunteers or whatever, then just let us know. So we'll hear from you and then we'd like to kind of hear from two of the educators that are here that are currently helping out with the gardens. If you guys can, if two of you can come up and kind of tell us what your needs are specifically and then also I'd like to hear from you and uh, Chef Koss about uh, you know your experience with teaching the, the kids nutrition and cooking all that kind of stuff and then if you guys uh, is there anybody else in here that you guys would like to hear extra information from uh, and then you wanted to talk for a couple minutes about your project okay um, so is there any does anybody else want to hear specifically from anyone and then Amy Okay, grant writers properly. <coughs> okay, great. 
Awesome. So uh, with that, go ahead. Yeah, with that first, me. Um, okay, I'm one-armed. Yeah, if I look weird, it's because I had shoulder surgery a couple weeks ago, so I'm kind of moving around slowly, but I can stand. Okay, um, I am a former science teacher. I taught high school science. I actually started my career out of college as a microbiologist for the corporation and then, and then taught high school. So I've got the education background, I've got the corporate background, and now my role with the school district is as a coordinator in the school community partnership program office. And my main, our office role is, is to build um, and help partnerships within the school district. The superintendent realizes and has realized the school district knows that the school district cannot do it all itself, especially when voters continue to turn down bond issues and we can't um, repair the air conditioning and the heaters in our schools. There's nothing left. And the primary goal of the schools is not, it. a lot of people think it's to be the hub of the community, but the primary goal of our schools and the school district is to educate our children, get them to graduate, and have them ready to either work or move on into further education. That's our, that's our goal and responsibility. So any partnerships that we work on, we, we try to help make sure that that's happening. Not that everything that you guys want to do is phenomenal and great and good for the good of our community, it absolutely is. But when we're working with the schools, we've got to remember that the mission of the schools is to educate our children, and we're mandated by um, federal legislation, by state regulation, that kind of thing. So with that being said, um, because I am a science teacher and a science background, I totally understand and, and I'm on board with everything that you all are trying to do. And we realized that in Clark County, the schools are the hub of that business. With 315,000 students, um, we're it. We're the audience. And if we can educate our kids and get their families involved in it, we're doing a great job. Um, with the GARP partners that we're working with now, I think it, it, it's working out really well that they're, they're seeing that, that the education of the kids is important, that the teachers need support because the teachers, although they may be passionate, they don't necessarily have the skills. And our big thing is, is is the sustainability, the transiency of our teachers. Our teachers might be in a school for a year or two, and then they're gone. Or they may have a principal this year that is totally in support, and they get the garden, and then that principal moves on to something else, and we've got um, somebody new in there. So we really, really, really have to work with a team that involves community, the parents, the kids, and the teachers in the school, so that if the teacher, the principal leaves, there's still a team there that, that can help that going. And I really appreciate they're both got a, um, there, Melissa left, but um, what you guys are doing that are doing that are doing a great job with garden teams and bringing in that community. We have to keep that. That's probably one of the biggest things to remember, to keep that going. We need to have that sustainability, that continuation, that assistance at the schools once the garden is built. Um, the superintendent has, has, five, has six directives that every single thing, every single employee in the school district, whether they're at my level, the teacher, a secretary, a custodian, a groundskeeper, they have to be focused on these six initiatives. And they're based on, on what the school district needs. They're based on um, graduating students, getting stu more students involved in upper level um, career and tech programs, um, third grade literacy. So, so some maybe some ideas are how we can incorporate some of the literacy type of things with the gardens. That's happening. I just I just kind of keep it in mind reading and um, especially at the third grade level, if a kid is able to read at third grade at grade level, they are ready to read for comprehension as they move on. So that's a big one. Um, I don't have the list in front of me. So anyway, so that's something to think about. Um, what my role is and, and how you guys can help is, is something that you just addressed is I do STEM partnerships, so not just gardens. The gardens is this piece of my job. Um, but anything that's related to science, technology, engineering, math is important. Gardens obviously contribute to that education. And some of the really cool things that are happening are businesses and corporations that are coming in to help build the garden. That's they come, they raise some money, they come out on a Saturday and help put it in. They're, they're starting to interact with the schools, and that's what we want to encourage. Um, and the engineers that come out and help to build the school and the garden are now um, putting in, helping with technology and becoming mentors and adopting the school in so many other ways. And that's really, really, really valuable. That's a, a partnership, and that's what I try to do. Um, the picture is bigger than gardens, as you said. We have um, recycling issues and all that that we're working through in the district. Huge bureaucracy, you all know that. Um, talking about school lunches, it's a big, a big mountain to climb. 
It's not unclimbable, but it's going to take a while. And because of our high free and reduced lunch, we are also mandated because we give so many kids free and reduced cost lunches. We have the U.S. government who is paying the school district um, the money to support that program so that our kids can at least eat. We're bound by what they say too. So it's bigger than just what our schools are serving our kids. It's national. It's you know it's way bigger than that. So that's that's something um, that we have to surmount. I know we're we're redoing the wellness policy in the district right now. One piece of it that I absolutely insisted they at one point said that only they're, they're worried about food process or food poisoning and families making food and bringing it in that kind of stuff. So they had originally written into the draft for the Clark County School District policy only processed only commercially processed foods can be served at any time in the school and I said um, wait a minute we've got 200 schools with gardens those kids need to eat what they're growing so we're getting that that fix and and I just want you to know that that's that's in there so I'm an advocate for what you do but I also understand the the bureaucracy and the rules and the things that we have to follow to keep our our district going you know we're funded by money that's dwindling big time in our state so okay is that good Okay. So, thank you again, Cheryl. Um, do we have we have two teachers here today? I believe from our schools. Yes. You want to stand up? Do you, yeah. It, I I feel like I'm just beginning. To, like, okay. okay. Well, we'd like to know. Well, if, if one of you would like to speak uh, for a few minutes from a teacher's perspective regarding some of these things relating to education, uh, you can at, right now. Or if not, if you don't need to, I can give a perspective from a beginning. I mean, starting with the garden. Okay. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Even if it's just like a minute or two or something, okay. just be nice to. Yeah. <laughs> Um, as I said, I'm Christine from Crestwood Elementary. We just put it in our garden last oh, wait, spring. A, oh, okay. Uh, probably. Anyway, from Crestwood Elementary School and through different grants and organizations, um, we've taken our garden from beginning last spring into, I believe, the first permaculture garden in the school district at this time. Um, right now, our winter garden is just sprouting, so it's really exciting. We just got our garden club going. Um, so we meet one morning a week. Also, we are using the Green Our Planet. We have a group of teachers that are using the Green Our Planet curriculum, starting that out. Um, and that really helps get people, the different teachers in the garden. Um, as I said, I'm just coming in on it in the last couple months with the curriculum, um, going in the garden and helping with the club. We've got some really energetic people and just trying to get more people involved like me. As I said, this is my beginning, so I'm a little awkward talking because I feel like I'm just stepping into this in the last month. Um, after where I was. Anyway, but it's really exciting. The kids are energetic. We just had, we've had a few Saturday parties. We had excellent turnout um, all over. As I said, the different, I don't want to list the organizations because I'm probably going to miss one because we have several organizations, community partnerships, grants, fellowships, curriculum. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful energy and just trying to get that through the rest of the school. It's a great start and I do think it's something that we can sustain and also reaching out to the community and actually for the students and the school and also helping the community at the same time. I think it's just everything that's going on right now is wonderful. Thank you. What are some needs that you have? Um, as I said, just coming in, the needs right now, as I said, we have a wonderful representative, Juliana, who has been working with the garden um, almost from beginning. She's done wonderful outreach. We've had people outreach to us. I'm meeting a lot of people just through different venues. Um, as I said, just being in the community and different things I'm organized in. Um, right now, I just said, just keep it going right now. As I said, we're looking into some bigger things. I don't have enough information to share right now, but we're looking at some really big things to really come out with the sustainability and show what the schools can do along with the community. Great. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Uh, did, what, what did you want to speak on? I wanted to just express the need of school teacher and like the Title One School, you think a lot of money, but if you're not a Title oh, One School, if you're not a Title One School, it's, it's much more difficult to get the money. So 
everybody so far. Um, I know we're running low on time, uh, but I wanted to um, have the two chefs here who have worked in schools uh, talk kind of from the business perspective and integrating and their experiences in the classroom. Uh, how much time do you th would we have for that? Yes, maybe like two and a half minutes each. And we'll just let you know. Okay. We'll let you guys know when it hits two minutes. Then. So, um, when I first started going into the schools, I was talking at the children, trying to explain to them why you have to eat good in kind of a fun way. And uh, although they were listening, I didn't really feel like I was truly connecting. And so when I really started to feel a connection and it started to grow as rapid as it has, uh, where the kids came behind with me, they created a concept called Kids' Kitchen. So instead of talking at them, I'm working with them. And so one of the things that I do when I when I do my classes, is we'll do we'll build whatever it is. Say it's a green smoothie. And we'll put in the grapes and talk about what's the healthiest part of the grape, the orange, and then we'll give each one of those children an opportunity to put something in the blender. But when it comes to the spinach or the kale, it's like okay, now it's time for the big job. Who's going to do it? Everyone gets to be a part of this, and it's amazing how all of a sudden kids could start eating spinach out of the palm of your hand. And so what it really is, what's so important for us is to find our passion and figure out what our truth is and what is it we want to communicate. You want to improve school, lunch, school lunches? These school garden programs raise money by doing, by doing uh, farmer's markets outside of the school. So I'm working with another group right now that's working on purchasing that food from those gardens and creating $4 lunches made, grown by the children and the teachers to sell back to the kids so you don't have to work with the system. There's a way to not work with the system. There's a way to where if we did a farmer's market, this is what I'm all about, and the kids were the farmer's market, pulling the fruits and vegetables from those gardens. You want to participate? $5 a head to go into that farmer's market. It goes into towards paying for those, uh, paying for those gardens. Every single one of you that has something you want to speak about, you have a kiosk. You have something where you can, just like if you were walking to a county fair with a microphone on, come, I want to tell you about this. This is my passion. You want to sign up here? We're doing this volunteer session next week. You got to come down. But we have got to come together for a live event. We can't always meet in private. We got to engage people immediately. And I think, the key, well, I'm working with Downtown Farmers Market, Carrie Clasby, and um, she has already offered her facility which is the old bus station, for us to start this immediately. Eventually, we'd want to take this downtown to an open area, but this is something that we can start within the next month if we all came together and we said, this is how we do it. And so, I don't know if that's what I was supposed to speak about, but that was resonating inside me, so I had to do it. So, uh, talking about uh, talk about so I was I was just actually there on Wednesday at Ollie Detweiler Elementary. Um, I, they call at Melissa calls at risk at risk schools. I guess it's a, I don't know. You know I was I actually was a, a teacher in Bangladesh. I was in the Peace Corps, so that's not that bad after like being over there for a while. Um, but it, it's interesting what Shane said about talking at the students, at the kids. Because I work with a lot of athletes, that's kind of my, my specialty, uh, a couple degrees, biology and then culinary. And so that's where, I, that's where my passion is, um, feeding people who, who are performing at a high level. So I started talking to them about how, how do you feel when you eat you know, something out of a bag box or window? Right, like being very conscious, and I like make up silly, ridiculous examples. I'm like, you know, do you in the jungle like go up to the tree and knock on the tree, and the tree opens its window and gives you food out of it? Right, so we want to eat things in the original form. And I actually said at one point, like, just getting really enthusiastic, I'm like, you know, and sometimes the kids fight back a little bit, which is an interesting kind of take. Like, they they're so trained that good food, food that's good for them is almost like a punishment or like something they have to do. And of course, then they're not going to do it. So then the kids are like, ew, 
and, and they're like, why should I eat this? And I caught myself saying so something that I would never say in a million years that uh, you should eat it because it's good for you. And, I, and as soon as I said it, as soon as the words came out of my mouth, I realized the error of that statement and I changed it. And I said, because it's going to make you feel good, right? And so I'll make the most ridiculous stuff with the kids where I'm like, you know, when you eat like too much, you're like, Ugh, and I have them doing all the faces because it's really like an emotional thing, right? Anyone who's ever tried to eat in a certain way for health or something, they know that it's not rational, right? It's much more connected to emotions. So making that emotional connections with kids, and they don't have to be like athletes like they're in football or baseball. They, they have, you know, every kid loves recess, right? Even if they're like sitting by themselves and not being like active, like they want to feel good during recess. And Feeling good during recess usually right after lunch, right? So if you eat good at lunch, you're gonna feel good during recess. And I may, I really work on. They're not gonna understand all the science of it, and they don't really need to. But that's basically what it comes down to. That's why anybody eats food that's good for them because after you eat it, you feel good. It's not something you need to convince anybody of. You eat a certain way, you feel better. You eat another way, you don't feel so good. So establishing that with with third graders. And getting them to kind of act into it, that's like, I don't know, that's the fun part and the part that works for me. Hey, I also want to stand up to be on a microphone for the class. Right. If you guys tomorrow, downtown, starting at 1, 2 to 3 o'clock, if you guys want to come and volunteer, we're doing a big kid's kitchen at the new Winter Wonderland at the Western Hotel. It's beautiful. They have like a snow sled slide, uh, ice skating. But we're doing it tomorrow. You guys should come down and see what it's about and see what it's like to get these kids engaged and inspired. But looking for volunteers, uh, Western Hotel tomorrow. Can you post about that on the, this event page so yeah. everybody has the information? I will. Cool. Yep. Thank you, chefs, for speaking. It's the the. Preparing the food to make it super delicious is obviously a huge part of sustainable uh, agriculture. Um, there's a lot of other components to all of this as well, and the emphasis again is to get everybody involved and, and connected. And it's extremely important for me to have everyone have the chance to speak. Um, but because we're close to the 8 o'clock mark, in case some people have to leave right then, uh, we feel it's important to kind of say what are going to be some of the follow-on actions that we're going to take to try to help sustain this um, conversation and this whole forum and space that we've created it's really important to us that we keep this tight and also uh, that we that everyone here can be part of expanding this because every one of you knows another 10 people who are passionate about this and they weren't able to be here today so we're going to try to facilitate this online but so uh, Angie's going to go ahead and run through some other notes that we need to hit tonight so um just uh, just so that we can get through and make sure that everybody has this information. Again, we're going to start the Facebook page. It's going to be, I'm going to double check when I get home. Um, and when we set this up, we're going to try and name it LV Green Community. And then we'll have like a group on Facebook. And then eventually we might make a page. I don't know if you guys are all familiar with the differences. So that way we can all go back to that. So please check into that uh, and, and request to be a part of that group. I'll put the information on tonight's event page. Um, I, uh, we were thinking that the next meeting that we would do is pro should probably be December 8th, which is a Monday. And then maybe we'll follow on with Mondays after that. And so that way it's kind of like a little bit more than two weeks from now. Then give us a break before, you know, until after the holidays, till after the Christmas time. And then Maybe at the very end of December or the very beginning of January, we might think about doing another meeting. Um, but also, I think one of the main things is that a lot of the people here need volunteers for different projects, like the project that you were just saying that you need. So if we can get a list of all the different projects that you're all different that you're all working on, and we can start like putting out that information, like, hey, I've got this community build day at Crestwood, like we just did last Saturday. So then that way we can try and get you guys volunteers for that. So start making a list of all those different things. Also, there's a lot of us that are privy to. Um, different resources such as like I have somebody who's wanting to donate um, like uh, tractor trailers and trucks and all of this different equipment that his business does not use all of the time and he needs to know like who he'd be able to give that stuff to also there's somebody who's volunteering to do soil analysis for a lot of the actual gardens that are going on for free so it's like if you guys have specific give us specific needs so it's like I need shovels I need you know uh, you know uh, I, I can't think of anything else a garden uses my mind just went blank Right, right. So it's like, uh, just think of those specific needs because we might actually be able to give you all those little things too. So just start thinking about that. Um, as far as the systems in place, I think that we've already discussed this. Once we do get the gardens into the schools, and uh, somebody please tell me, uh, you said it was 200 schools here in CCSD that currently have gardens. Is that what you said? There's probably just under 200. I'm actually trying to get a handle on that myself. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. All right. So that's awesome. And then um, uh, there's, if we could somehow develop a list of all of the schools that do have gardens and all the schools that are wanting gardens and all the schools that don't have them and they haven't even started, uh, then that way we can try and get, because what we were kind of thinking about was uh, basically getting people to sponsor each school. So instead of just giving a whole bunch of money to this program, say, hey, you know what? I own this company and I want to sponsor this garden at this school. I want to sponsor them by doing this or doing that. So go ahead. Building like a, a, an interactive school map of what what schools have what what grades they do what they grow what their partners are things like that so that'll definitely be your yeah, we'll perfect. Yeah. There. There's also a resource right now if you go to the Green Our Planet website it's the one it's the only one I've seen so far that is a map of at least all of Green Our Planet's gardens. Yeah, so you're compiling it. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, yeah, so if in the meantime, check out, well, um, please post links on this event page, too, is to all these different organizations, like, go on there, say, hey, I was this guy, you know, this is this link to this organization for especially the key players, so that, to make sure that we all have your information in case we have some resources we could share with you. Um, uh, I think that the, the main two things that everybody's saying that they need are funding and volunteers. So that's awesome that you're here with, uh, you know, being able to give us some information on the grant writing. Uh, also, I have, you know, like I personally have some lawyer friends that are saying that they want to assist with grant writing too. So if you guys have any other information on how to raise funds for these schools to be able to facilitate these gardens, that would be super appreciated. Um, let's see what else. Searching materials. About that we already kind of covered a lot of this stuff um now um just just start thinking about this now we're we're probably going to be you know lv green uh community right and we're going to want to at the next meeting develop a mission statement as to what exactly we're going for and kind of come up with like a six month two year five-year plan as to what we want to do. So start thinking on that right now as to what kind of, you know, what you would like to see this organization, this collective of people end up eventually doing. Um, and then also start thinking about, um, there's, a, we've heard a lot of problems from different organizations that, you know, they'll start working with the company and then that company ends up not being, you know, in it for the intentions that they originally advertised. So start thinking about what kind of standards you guys would like to, to expect from the different businesses that we're going to end up having to work with on these things. So just start thinking on that. Um, and uh, basically also start thinking about kind of the information that you would like to see in packets that would go to legislators and to corporations that we need to get support from for us to be able to, to do these things. Um, so, okay. Yeah, I think that's everything from the meeting because we kind of went through a lot of this stuff already. Okay, great. So then uh, let me just kind of conclude that, you know, uh, the top off the end of saying is that the, the purpose of this, and I know we're, we're fo focusing a lot of the dialogue on school gardens. It's just kind of, it's partly what we know and what we think is part of, a big part of the solution. But obviously, sustainability, green movements, um, you know, creating a sustainable city and, and way to produce food, healthy people who, you know, who are educated. It's, it's all one thing together. And, and what we want to do is create with this kind of movement, with this LV Green community that we're trying to help establish here, is really just to get everybody to be more empowered, to be more connected, to get the resources that everyone needs for their individual projects, and also to create essentially something that helps unite the community so that we're all very strong, and that is that sort of beacon that attracts everyone else so that we can get larger projects done, so we can be more visible and, and get a lot more assistance for, for everything that we're trying to do. So the, the philosophy behind what we're doing is inclusion. We want to do, we want to be working on things that includes everyone. We don't want anyone to feel excluded. And we want to empower everyone to be able to communicate and be heard because everyone's voice is really valuable. So with that, uh, should we, well, first of all, does anyone have to leave right now at 8 o'clock? You need to go? Okay. Awesome. Thank yeah, thank you very much. 
so the next thing we're going to do, though, is I'm going to pass this microphone and sort of like the conch. Um, pass this to uh, Amy and also, I, I forgot your name, sir. So. Javid and James also uh, to, to speak. And I think there was someone else. Uh, yeah, eh, exactly. So, and maybe one other person I'm forgetting, but we might give... We don't know how much time everyone has to kind of stick around. If, yeah, go ahead, Steve. Oh, I'm going to suggest that it would be great if we could have a little time for networking. Yeah. Just kind of before, chatting. A lot of people have to go because I know we had a group of Zoom discussion. Some people would like to go with Just discussion. sort of that open connection time. I think that's very important. Yeah, yeah. let's keep it for two minutes for our discussion here. Is everybody okay with that? If we do the next couple ones just under two minutes, and then that way we can kind of start networking and talking to each other? Well, I think, what was, I think what Steve's saying is that he wants to be able to connect with a few individuals in the room because he has to leave now. But um, I don't know. Do you think it would be possible to have those convert Like, we have this. Like, okay. I think maybe what we'll do is just keep these, t like, what everyone's saying to, like, a tight two minutes. One minute would be, you know, preferable. And then just sort of open it up so everyone can talk to the key people in the room that they need to connect with. Does that sound, is that, is that cool? Okay. So um, we just start here from left to right. James, go ahead. Hi, everybody. Um, as Enrique and uh, Anna can attest to, uh, there's um, a lot. There's a lot of gardens. There's a lot of farmers markets, but there's also a lot of waste. Uh, a lot of food that's going into the garbage can that can't even be given away. Uh, I'm starting a group with uh, Melissa Blinn and Create a Change now to figure out what we can do with the waste. Um, and how we can turn it around, give revenue to the schools, and then turn around and sell whatever's left over to uh, the community, local restaurants, local chefs, catering um, companies, things like that. So um, it's just starting right now. We're trying to track uh, what's in the schools, what's uh, the average waste, trying to figure out a budget, and then trying to come up with a system. Um, thank you guys for putting this on tonight. This is awesome to be able to connect. Um, I wanted to share that I'm in the midst of writing a grant for a million dollars um, for a agriculture space in the Arts District and the City of Las Vegas has agreed to let me do this at uh, Boulder Plaza. If you guys are familiar with it, it's in between Arts Factory and Arts Square, just between First Street and Main Street. And they have um, are contributing $150,000 for any infrastructure that I'll need to do this, meaning if I need to ramp up my water meter or get more power to the space um, and to do the first agriculture if I don't get the million dollar grant. Um, the reason I think this project is really important is because this is a two year long conversation with public works and cultures affairs and um, the one request that they had from the mayor was that uh, we engage children and it's um, about education and learning which in this room I think that might not be a problem um, to get people involved in that way. I also think it's important because the reason we don't have green spaces in downtown is because people are so terrified that it's going to attract homeless people and it won't be this great inviting space and I want to change their minds about this. Um, and I think food is the solution because I guess just with my involvement in Vegas Roots Community Garden and um, you guys that do work with kids, it's amazing because my, my six-year-old was a one or two when he started getting introduced to the garden and now he collects all his seeds when he eats. Like it does make a difference. The work you guys are doing does make a difference. Um, and my daughter, like I was missing all of my bowls and I went out to the patio and she had grown all these watermelons were sprouting from seeds she collected. I didn't know she did it. They, these kids do absorb it. And um, so changing the city's mind, I think, is important because we want this project, one way or the other, if it goes through, to start spreading out and showing them that we can have green space and food is an answer to that. So um, I'm looking for people that understand aquaponics um, and vertical gardening. It's a really small space and we need to, I'm almost done, I'm sorry. Uh, we want to keep it open so that we can do programming in there, which means it needs to go vertical. And going vertical means we're providing shade through that vegetation. So I need the right people on the team. I want to keep it lean because I want the money to go towards the agriculture. Um, 
but I need the right team to write into that grant. I want you guys to get paid for the things that you guys do. So if you think you can help. Thanks, Amy. Okay, so I'll keep this uh, short and sweet. Uh, what we need is people who need grants. It's that simple. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, our uh, grant writer was not able to be here tonight. She was uh, very ill today and, and uh, was not able to make it. So you're going to have to deal with me instead of listening to her wonderful uh, story. But uh, basically what uh, we had seen uh, talking to a number of organizations in the Valley is that uh, there was a real need to create a grant writers cooperative where all of the people who are working on grant funding can come together and support each other and develop, uh, for example, uh, best practices and uh, develop maybe some templates for certain uh, recurring funding needs that may occur in schools and, and uh, with community agriculture. And also to make sure that there is uh, sufficient preparation. One of the biggest things we found was that people were going for grants, but they weren't prepared for the grants that they wanted to apply for. Many grants require three years of audited financials. And so if you don't have those three years of audited financials, that is going to prevent uh, many uh, federal grants, many uh, state grants, but that doesn't mean there aren't grants out there that you can get. So what we'd like to do is have a, a grant writers cooperative uh, that uh, comes together and have all of the people who are working on grant funded projects support each other and develop the community. So hopefully that was short enough and sweet enough. And uh, <laughs> Great, great to be here again. Uh, I'll do my best to keep this short and sweet too. Um, so in the Conservation District of Southern Nevada, we have several subcommittees, uh, like we have a Christmas recycling program. We got a bike-a-thon coming up here next June up at Mount Charleston. Uh, conservation, that's uh, obviously our, our focus. And one of the, uh, I've been really fortunate to be a part of for about a year now, one of the subcommittees we have is called Grow Nevada formerly known as the Steering Committee for Community Gardens and School Gardens. So um, we hope to be, along with what you guys are doing tonight, a great catalyst. Uh, we started meeting over there. We got to catalyze that great group. And bravo to David and some others that have kept going forward. Um, so again, we'd like to, through Grow Nevada, catalyze your growth and really act as facilitators and really kind of be Switzerland. You know, um, I've uh, witnessed several uh, great intentional efforts to build community and great uh, local food and, and healthy uh, communities and so forth. Uh, I get a great sense that the people in here are very sincere about doing it and effectively doing it this time. And so we'd like to help catalyze that with you guys. And uh, one project that Grow Nevada has really kind of taken on, we have some great resources. Sarah is here tonight. Thank you for coming, Sarah. Uh, we have some interns uh, at UNLV who are really going to uh, help service our social media uh, with that being a platform. And we want to do three-minute vignettes on you guys and everyone else in the room and have a three minute, really a video library of all these awesome people doing these awesome projects, getting million dollar grants and all kinds of things and uh, showcase it to decision makers and all their related networks and so forth along with all the grassroots folks and we'd like to help be an interface for other folks that want to network and community organize and it really does take a village. We hope to be a part of all your worlds and very excited to be here starting this off. So thank you guys and good luck. Okay, so with that being said, um, we're not trying to be in charge. We're just going to be facilitators. If there's absolutely anything that you have to say about how we can make these meetings more effective, please let us know. This is completely an open forum. Uh, we know it was a little awkward with the food to this today. We didn't know about it until the last minute, so we're going to try and get that cleaned up for next time. But anything else that you guys can think of, uh, please just you know comment on the Facebook page, and we're going to try and get it sorted out. 
So. Yeah, and I also I um, created a new communication platform. And I'm going to try to aggregate all the information and links. So I know a Facebook uh, community page can be like really, really long. So I'm going to try to get all those links and resources into one place, so it's all you know much more comprehensive and condensed for people who don't have a lot of time to read through everything on Facebook. And I'll also publish that so you guys can see. So hopefully everyone filled their uh, name and email contact information on the form so that then we can send an email out to everybody once all those resources are ready. And uh, with that, I just want to really thank everybody for coming. This is really awesome and I see this as a new beginning for a uh, really coordinated and strong collective impact in a green space in Las Vegas. So thank you everyone. Thank you.